Inmate Joseph Wood was pronounced dead today at 3.49 Arizona time at the Arizona State Prison Complex in Florence. The pre execution procedure began at 1.52 this afternoon, and as I said, it was concluded at 3.49. Uh, inmate Wood did not order a specific last meal yesterday evening. He ate, uh, or was served rather, what the general population was served, but he only ate two cookies from that meal. Um, his last words were rather extensive, so please bear with me. Inmate Wood on his last words said, first, I'd like to say thank you to Julie, Kevin, Dale, Deacon Ed, and your offices who have done everything to keep me from coming to this. <clears throat> I'm truly thankful, but when I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior in 2007, I knew this day would come. I am okay. I know that whatever happens, I'll be with my Savior, Jesus Christ, and I take comfort in knowing that my pain, that today my pain stops. And I said a prayer that on this or any other day, you may find peace in your hearts, and may God forgive all of you. Those were his last words. Uh, now is the opportunity for media witnesses to uh, come up and explain uh, what uh, occurred today, uh, I believe that uh, is Astrid here, Astrid Galvan from the Associated Press is the first media witness to speak. Hi, um, so I'll just give you a brief rundown of what I saw today. Um, Mr. Wood um, was gasping for air about in five second to 12 second intervals for almost two hours, an hour and 50 minutes. Um, he, there was a deacon there who was praying for him and, um, there were several witnesses. He turned around at the very beginning, he turned around and looked at, um, the gallery kind of was looking all around while he was being prepped. And then, um, he gave his last words. He smiled at the gallery at least once and also, um, looked directly at the deacon, gave him a smile and then had a frown on his face. Um, any other questions that you guys have? You said he was gasping for air. In, in how, how would you do it? Was it, it, it was almost like snoring, I would, would, would that be accurate? Um, so you just, it looked almost like he was um, like uh, yawning almost. That's how it looked without sound. So he how was- How long did that go on? For about an hour and 50 minutes, five zero. Can you give us your name? Astrid Galvan. A S T R I D G A L V A N. I now work for the Associated Press. Any questions? Thank you. Michael Kiefer from the Arizona Republic. Uh, I'm Michael Kiefer from the Arizona Republic. This is the fifth execution I've witnessed. I've seen them done with thiopental, with pentobarbital. Usually it takes about 10 minutes person goes to sleep. This was not that. Uh, this, uh, it looked like that at the beginning for maybe the first seven minutes. He closed his eyes, he went to sleep. Then he started gasping and, and he did. He gasped for more than uh, an hour and a half and when the doctor would come in to check his consciousness, he would turn the mic on. You could hear a deep snoring, sucking air sound and this went on for more than an hour and a half. The whole process took uh, probably, well, you know, about two hours from, from start to finish. They did, they did manage to put lines in both of his arms. They didn't go into the femoral vein uh, as they often do. And so it started off looking as if, if it was going all right, but then uh, obviously something didn't go right. It took, uh, it took two hours. So um, that's what I have to say. Could you, you said you've covered five executions. Yes. I can't say it was horrible to see, but you know, as he, he would open his mouth and you'd see his chest move and it would go all the way down to his stomach. So it was a clear gasp, you know, and it just sort of looked like a fish opening and closing his mouth, you know, at, uh, at, at the beginning when the doctor came and turned on the microphone to say that he was still sedated, you could hear this deep, loud, snoring, sucking sound. So I, you can only assume that that went on for the entire hour and a half. 
No, that you, it's hard to say. I mean, and he he was sedated. The doctor kept saying he was sedated. It did. There were there were no there was no expression of pain. I don't think you could say that. I you know I mean he he was unconscious, but he was uh, you know clearly struggling uh, for breath. And and that's atypical because as I said, usually an execution takes 10, 11 minutes, and uh, you see virtually nothing. What seemed to be the reaction in the gallery and among the officials who were watching this go on for as long as it went on? Uh, there are a lot of looks exchanged. Uh, two of the attorneys, uh, two of uh, Wood's attorneys got out, and I understand uh, 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 Troy said that they went to, uh, to make some calls. It was uh, sort of, you know, one wondered if someone was going to come in and stop the procedure because, you know, we, you know Troy and I were looking at each other saying, he's not dying. We wondered if it was going to happen, uh, honestly, after all this time. What about, what about Yeah, come on up, Troy. The, come the on. lawyers apparently filed uh, something this afternoon. Right. And, is outlining what you're saying. Was there ever a, a, a moment when it seemed like someone was going to get sedated? No. The doctor came out maybe four times to check, and then he would announce that he was still sedated. Uh, at about uh, at about three thirty, so the process all started at about about one thirty, and by one forty they had the first line in. By one fifty, he had, he was saying his the curtain opened. He said his last words. Then um, the uh, uh, by one fifty three the procedure started. Uh, by uh, let's see, one fifty seven he was unconscious, uh, and then um, then at uh, at about uh, two uh, two o five or 203, he started gasping, and that continued uh, uh, it constantly. I counted more than uh, 640, other counted like 660 times, and uh, that finally started to peter out at, uh, at 333. By 336, it stopped, and then he called, uh, um, Director Ryan uh, called the death at, uh, at 348. No, no, excuse me, I take that back, at uh, 349. It was, it was two hours. You know, if I could just, you know, kind of encapsulate everything. Hey, Troy Hayden. I'm Troy Hayden. I'm with uh, Fox Phoenix. Um, it, it was very disturbing to watch. Um, you know, uh, Joe Wood is dead, but it took him two hours to die. And to watch a man lay there for an hour and 40 minutes gulping air, I can liken it to if you catch a fish and throw it on the shore, the way the fish opens and closes its mouth. So the two drugs worked. He eventually died. But I can't imagine this is what the criminal justice system had hoped for when they came up with this new drug protocol. And uh, it, it, was, it was tough for everybody in that room. And at a, at a certain point, you wondered if he was ever going to die. I mean, it was serious. I'm sorry, can I have one last question from Michael? You've seen a lot of these. Did this seem cruel and unusual compared to the other executions that you I, I'm not going to go there to cruel and unusual. I mean, it, it's hard to say what he felt or I, I just know it took a long, it was not efficient. It took a, uh, it took a long time. This is what, uh, you know, we, there, there was, uh, there have been prior incidents with this. There was one in Ohio in January that took 20 minutes and, and there was concern because that person was gasping for air and because the execution took an, this exorbitant amount of time of 20 minutes. This took two hours. Um, the family members, were they they were there, yeah. Uh, Not his family. I, um, I believe they were right there. Yes, actually, they're back here. I don't know. Are you, are you yeah, willing to speak? Right here. Okay. Um, Questions for me, Yeah. Mauricio, if you want to look. Can I change the camera? Mauricio Marine from uh, KOLB in Tucson. Good afternoon. Mauricio Marine, M A U R I C I O M A R I N. I'm a news reporter with CBS in Tucson. This is the first time I've seen an execution. And uh, yes, it was an excruciating sort of uh, experience to go through. It took, uh, as I mentioned, about two hours to go through the whole process. Uh, I counted about 660 times. He sort of gasped, kind of looked like as if he was trying to breathe or catch air uh, in his lungs. Um, I'll just go through my notes here. Um, when it first started, they opened the curtains. He uh, was laying down. He kind of turned and looked towards the area of where the witnesses were. Um, and uh, after that, for the most part, once they were doing the clinical portion of it, he, uh, for the most part, looked straight ahead, occasionally looking over to see where or what the technicians were doing, but for the most part, looking straight ahead with sort of a blank face. And uh, sort of that breathing, as I mentioned, over 600 gulps. Um, you can see initially the uh, 
breathing from his stomach and you can see the gulping from his mouth. Uh, by the end, it sort of slowed down. It was, uh, by my count, happening about every five to 10 seconds. By the end, the last five gulps or so happened within uh, five, six minutes of each other. Um, do you have any questions? Great, thank you. I understand, <clears throat> excuse me, I understand that we do have some families, members of the victim, the victims, I should say. Uh, if you're willing to speak, please uh, come forward. I believe we had four members. Please introduce yourself. Okay. I am Jeannie Brown. I'm the daughter of Deborah Dietz, and I'm sorry, I'm the daughter of Eugene Dietz, the sister of Deborah Dietz. Um, it's been a long 25 years, horrible 25 years. What I saw today with him being executed is nothing to the day it happened on August 7, 1989. This was nothing. I don't believe he was gasping for air. I don't believe he was suffering. Sounded to me as though he was snoring. Finally, it's come to a part of our lives that we can put somewhat of this behind us and continue and move forward. Although I still have to live the rest of my life without my sister and my father. So everybody here from what I heard said it was excruciating. You don't know what excruciating is. What's excruciating is seeing your dad lying there in a pool of blood, seeing your sister lying there in a pool of blood. That's excruciating. This man deserved it. And I shouldn't really call him a man. He deserved everything he had coming to him. Do you feel like justice was served? It, it took too long. I, I, I can't, this is ridiculous. 25 years later for this to go through, after appeal, after appeal, after appeal. It, it's ridiculous, the paperwork I have. It, it, it's just insane. In the last week, the ups and downs of, yes, it's going through, no, the motion of deny. It, it, it's ridiculous. It's emotionally crazy to have to do what I have been through. Not only myself, my husband, and my sister standing in the back of the room, which wishes not to speak at this time. talk about how you know, he didn't appear to be suffering, he appeared to be snoring, and you know there's been this controversy about these two drugs. Do you wish it had been done a different way so you didn't have this hour and 50 minutes that it could have been done quicker so there wouldn't be this debate, there wouldn't be the witnesses describing it as, as him struggling? I, re I really can't answer that. Um, how many members of your family are here? There's three of us. Myself, my sister, and my husband, who's standing right next to me. And can you spell out your name? J E A N N E, Jeannie, last name Brown, B R O W N. When he gave his last words, what did you think? Do you think he was sincere? Did you, did you buy into that? No. No, he wasn't sincere until the last minute when he turned around and smiled and laughed at us. He smiled and laughed at you? Yes. Yes, because nobody sees the real picture of what took place the last 25 years or what took the place that this happened on August 7th, 1989. Everybody's more worried about, did he suffer? Who really suffered was my dad and my sister when they were killed. So what do you have to say to the people that, I mean, the protesters that are outside saying that this is inhumane? It is not inhumane. Have it happen to one of their family members and see how they feel. No, he wasn't suffering. He was sleeping. He was sleeping. A couple times when the microphone came on, you could hear him snoring. Not gasping for air. No, he wasn't gasping for air. And at this time, I'm going to have my husband Richard speak. I was a witness in the shooting. My name's Richard Brown. I was a witness in the shooting. And from what I've seen today, you guys are blowing us all out of proportion about these drugs. You know, this man. I mean, conducted a horrifying murder. And you guys are going, oh, let's worry about the drug and how he affect. Well, why didn't we give him a bullet? 
Why didn't we give him some Drano? Why didn't we give him something else? Everybody's worried about the drug. You know, these people that do this, that are on death row, they deserve to suffer a little bit. This guy's been here for 25 years, getting medication, eating, roof, bed, clothes, shoes. Where are they at? Oh, that's right, they're dead. They've been dead for 25 years. So how would you guys feel if it was one of your family members? Would you be talking about the drug or would you be talking about your family member? I saw the life go out of my sister-in-law's eyes right in front of me as he shot her to death. I'm so sick and tired of you guys blowing this drug stuff out of proportion because to me that's BS. There's a lot of other families and people that have not ruined their lives but had a hard time with this. All the witnesses that are there, friends of mine still, friends of the family still, it's not just about him. It's about other people that suffered, that are still suffering. I have a seven foot file cabinet for 25 years of stuff I've gotten back from, whether it be through the media, whether it be through victim witness, whether it be from the attorneys, how they were worried about, and lately, about this drug. To me, it looked like he was sleeping, he was snoring, that's what I saw. And then he passed away. So how is that suffering? How do you guys call that suffering? Because it's a new drug? Come on. You guys are blowing this way out of proportion. It's about the victims. It ain't about the guy that went to sleep and never woke up. Now, my family members can rest in peace. Does anybody look at that? No, we're still worried about the drugs. It's not about the drugs. It's about the person that did what he did. He's the one that pulled the trigger. We didn't give him the drugs. The state gave him the drugs, and he went to sleep, and that was it. He didn't yell out, hey, don't do that, no, no, don't do that, and boom, boom, you're dead. No. He didn't yell out once. He smiled and laughed at us and then went to sleep. So all you people that think that these drugs are bad, well, the hell with you guys. You guys need to look at the big picture. What was it like for you to be in the room and to be that close to him? Because that couldn't have been easy. Well, last time I was that close, he shot my sister-in-law to death. Knowing where he was going, it was easy. It was real easy. R-I-C-H-A-R-D-B-R-O-W-N. Any questions? Thank you so much. Thank you. Is there any other victim's family members? 